may share a part of its name with a well-known dog breed, but believe me, this fish is far from being cute. Well, I think it's kind of cute. Anyway, welcome to another installment of Gade's Wild Planet, and today we'll be going over the Poor Beagle Shark. The Poor Beagle is a shark species belonging to the family Lamnidae in the order Lamniforms. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, I am simply stating where the shark sits in the taxonomic rank. For those of you who don't know what that is, you most likely heard it in your biology class. Taxonomic rank is listed in the order of domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. If there are any of you currently taking biology classes, memorize the taxonomic rank well. This will come up in many biology tests. Trust me, I'm speaking from experience. Now, where were we? Oh yeah. The family Lamnidae, or mackerel sharks, consists of four other shark species, including the salmon shark, both long and short finned makos, and the most famous of the family, the great white. In fact, if you look closely at the poor beagle, it kind of resembles a great white. However, it is much smaller than its more famous cousin. Male poor beagles can reach 5 feet in length, while the much larger females can reach 8 feet in length. A general rule with sharks is that females tend to be a lot bigger than the males. Some of the largest poor beagle specimens have been measured at an astounding 12 feet in length and weighing close to 300 pounds. Poor beagles can be found in cold waters in the North Atlantic and Southern Hemisphere. They are a migratory species, often migrating to inshore and to the surface during the summer and migrating offshore towards deeper waters during the winter. As I mentioned earlier, the poor beagle lives in cool waters where temperatures can be as low as 35 degrees. That's near freezing. That's cold enough to kill most sharks. However, the poor beagle can survive waters this cold thanks to its special ability that is unique among sharks, or fish in general. Mackerel sharks, including the poor beagle, are one of the few fish species that are able to regulate their body temperature, or endothermic. Now, when we think about animals that are endothermic, we normally think about animals that are in the class Mammalia, mammals, or in the class Avis, birds. Poor beagles are able to raise their body temperature to 20 degrees higher than the surrounding water, making them perfectly adaptable to life in these frigid waters. In a way, you could say the poor beagle is semi-warm-blooded. However, this ability comes at a cost. The poor beagle requires lots of energy in order to maintain its body temperature. That energy comes in the form of food. This shark is a very active hunter. Inside its mouth are rows of triangular shaped teeth, which it uses to catch many of the bony fish that it feeds on, including mackerel and herring. They also feed on crustaceans and cephalopods, and smaller sharks such as dogfish. Poor beagles mate between autumn and winter. Female poor beagles go through an 8 to 9 month gestation period, and then gives birth between 1 to 5 live pups. While the poor beagle is a highly active predator, it rarely attacks humans. There have only been three recorded attacks, all of which were non-fatal nor involved serious injury. In fact, we are more of a danger to it than it is to us. Poor beagle is listed as vulnerable with populations decreasing due to overfishing, whether as bycatch or an intended target to supply the shark meat and fin trade. One of the most popular shark related dishes is the Asian dish known as shark fin soup. There are many ways we can help this shark by stopping the consumption and all out banning shark fin soup. It's not even worth the try. I heard it doesn't even taste good and only contains a small amount of shark. So yeah, not worth it. And not to buy products that contain shark body parts like liver. And another thing, just go out and see this animal. It's better to see it alive than dead. There are tours that allow you to swim with these animals. You can also help by supporting conservation programs that will protect the species and its habitat. Thanks for watching, and remember, like and subscribe for new videos. See you next time!